Massachusetts, we have worked often together on these democracy issues, and I look forward to doing that in the days ahead. I also want to commend uh, Senator Klobuchar from Minnesota because she has been our point person on the Rules Committee, which is central to this whole debate. I think we all understand what's at stake. That's what my colleagues have been outlining. And I think we have been very fortunate to have Senator Klobuchar at the helm. And she and I have worked together on one of the issues I'm going to talk about, vote by mail. But I just want people to understand uh, how valuable she has been. Mr. President and colleagues, a year ago today, not far from where we stand this afternoon, domestic terrorists tried to beat our democracy to the ground. They might have been successful were it not for the police officers who defended our democracy as they were viciously attacked and beaten. Before anything else is said, in my view, by an elected official, we need to salute these officers and all those who work day in and day out alongside them here in the Capitol. For their courage, we ought to be eternally grateful. The insurrection on January 6th was instigated by the former president who wanted to undo the results of a democratic election. Let's also understand that unfortunately, inciting the mob wasn't the end of it. Donald Trump didn't exactly walk quietly off into the sunset after the Biden inauguration. The effort to undermine our democracy, to end free and fair elections in America, goes on as we speak. Support for the big lie is essentially unchanged from where it was a year ago. And an awful lot of Republicans who said after January 6th that they were done with the former president have cozied back up to him just 12 months later. The only reason the mob is not here today is Donald Trump didn't summon them back. Now, in my view, it's our job to ensure that another attack like this, or by any other means, never succeeds. And we'll have more to say about those issues in the days ahead. In my view, protecting the vote has got to be step one in protecting democracy. A guiding principle for the Senate must be that while politics may guide a citizen's vote, it should never determine whether they are allowed to vote. To act otherwise would undermine the very foundations of a representative democracy. Empowering voters with a system built on integrity and accountability a system that promotes participation rather than discourages it. A system with a real history of bipartisanship. Mr. President and colleagues, that's the kind we have in my home state of Oregon. Oregon believes so strongly in the right to vote that everybody gets a ballot sent straight to their home. Mr. President, I'm honored to say that I was the first United States Senator elected in an all vote by mail election. Back then, it was Oregon Republicans who were pushing to expand vote by mail. A Democratic governor even vetoed a vote by mail bill in 1995. Right after my election, the Oregon Republicans flip back and vote by mail was suddenly, oh, so bad. Now, everything flipped a few months later when my friend, Gordon Smith, a Republican from Eastern Oregon, 
became the second United States senator to be elected by mail. At this point, Oregon voters said, we've just had it with everybody looking for some kind of partisan slant here. We just think vote by mail is a really terrific idea. And they went out to vote at a ballot measure and they chose to make Oregon's elections all vote by mail, passing it with 70% of the vote in 1998. This, in my view, is the culmination of a process that started 40 years ago with some local elections in Lynn County, a small county in the western part of our state. It grew and grew from there. Elected official, election officials learned that when you let people vote at home, participation goes up and the costs go down. One of the biggest defenders of Oregon's vote at home system was the late Dennis Richardson. He was our Secretary of State, and by his characterization, he was about as conservative, about as conservative a Republican as you could get. But when the Trump era came along and people criticized our elections and said, oh, there's all this fraud, they were just spouting lies about it. Dennis Richardson, the late Dennis Richardson, stood up and said, I'm a conservative Republican. They're wrong. They're wrong in what they're saying about Oregon. And he even wrote to Donald Trump in 2017, and I quote, we're confident that voter fraud in last November's election didn't occur in Oregon. Every election now, Mr. President, young Oregonians watch their parents voting around their kitchen table. And it's a real inspiration to the next generation to make sure they're committed voters. Voting at home gives you the opportunity to be more informed. If there is a particular measure, an initiative, or a race that you haven't researched, you get time to look into the options. When you're done, your ballot goes into a security envelope, you sign the outside, and off it goes. For me, that's when I head from our home in southeast Portland, the Selwood branch of the Multnomah County Public Library, drop my ballot in the collection box, and head home. No long lines, no glitchy touchscreen systems, just hassle-free voting. A recent analysis in the Election Law Journal said that of all 50 states, voting is easiest in Oregon. And Senator Klobuchar, I've heard colleagues go back and forth to say who's number one and participation okay. and who's number one and all of these aspects. And um, I think like a number of other states, we're all kind of competing for the highest turnout rates. We get some of the highest in the country. Uh, we've been a leader in terms of increasing turnout among black and Latino voters. Voter registration is automatic. It's like as easy as a trip to the Department of Motor Vehicles. For myself, and Senator Klobuchar and I have talked about this so often over the years, I have been proposing legislation to have universal at-home voting since 2002. That's what my Vote at Home Act would do. It would give every American the right to vote the Oregon way, the vote that my neighbors and I can do. I will say here on the Senate floor, I guarantee that you do it the Oregon way. It will be a nationwide hit immediately. Letting people vote at home is also the best defense against some of the really horrendous uh, methods of suppressing the vote. For example, what we've seen over the last few years, state and local governments shutting polling places, particularly ones that serve black and Latino voters, what unforgivable actions. These days, in some areas, Republicans are making it illegal to give food and water to people standing in line to vote. Shouldn't be a test of physical stamina to be able to vote. Nobody should have to wonder if they'll be able to vote if they step out of line, go to a bathroom. Nobody should have to sacrifice an entire day to participate in this incredible incredible democratic system that is America. That's why I proposed the People Over Long Lines Act, called the Poll Act. 
The bill says state governments have to guarantee that everybody who votes in person can do so within 30 minutes. Anybody who's forced to wait longer has a legal action they can bring. If they sue and win, it's 50 bucks for waiting longer than 30 minutes, 50 bucks more for every hour after that. A free bit of advice to states, you know, get ready. Make sure people don't have to wait in lines. One of the best ways to make sure they don't have to wait in lines is to let them vote at home. It's not just Oregon, by the way, that votes by mail. And I think, Senator Klobuchar, we heard some of our colleagues talk about their states and, and voting uh, by mail. If you need another example, let's think about the United States Armed Forces. Most service members and their families vote by mail in every election. All of the people who wear the uniform in the United States can vote by mail. Every federal election been that way for decades. So the bottom line is that we think it's time to get the Oregon system into every nook and cranny in America. We feel that way because it works, it raises voter participation, lowers the cost of running elections, helps voters be more informed, safe and secure. And if you're resisting safe and efficient elections with higher voter turnout, then you're suppressing democracy in America. My home state of Oregon shows the way to preserve America. Mr. President, I'm going to close my remarks. I think we'll, we'll have Senator Klobuchar um, speak for all of us here in a moment. But in my closing, I want to touch just for a moment on my family that I'm so proud of. My German family fled their homeland, a place where they were deeply rooted in that nation's society, as my grandfather was a member of parliament and served on the Berlin City Council. My family was forced as Jews to flee the fascists who had taken over their democracy. They fled to America as the last remaining beacon of freedom. With that freedom, my dad chose to serve in our army that fought, fought against German fascism. And my dad's been recognized for his unique contributions. We were so thrilled, for example, uh, to have the senators from Maryland talk about the Ritchie boys. My dad was one of the Ritchie boys, a German kid who taught himself English so he could be out there fighting the Nazis. And I remember the good work of the senators from Maryland and how thrilled our family was about that. So my dad was about the greatest patriot around. He felt he was so lucky to be an American, to be in our army, to stand up for American values. And my final remark here today, Mr. President, is about my dad. If my dad was alive today, he would tell us, senators, make sure that the light in America's beacon of freedom never goes out. President, with that, I yield the floor.